Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the restraints. It is a part of patient safety. I am Jenlin Bernard, tutor, working at MMM College of Nursing. This video will be helpful to understand and gain knowledge about the definition of restraints, indications, purposes, classification and also the nurse's responsibility in taking care of patients with restraints. What is restraint? Restraint is defined as the intentional restriction of a person's voluntary movement or behavior. The general principles related to the application of restraint is the restraint should be selected to reduce the client's movement at the needed body part alone or it can be selected as per the potential risk. Inform the family members related to the application of restraint. Explain the type of restraint and reason for its use, especially when it is used for the ortho treatment. The patient should be able to understand why they are on restraint. Then only they can be able to cooperate with the treatment. It should not be interfered with the treatment. Bony prominence should be padded adequately before applying the restraints. The restraints has to be changed as needed especially when it is becoming wet or soil. It should be secured away from the client's reach. It should be able to release quickly when it is needed. It should be attached to the bed frame not on the side rails. It should be removed whenever is possible, especially when patient is sleeping or when patient behavior is very calm and quiet. Frequent circulation check should be performed when extremities are involved. Indications for the application of restraint When the client's behavior is putting themselves at risk of harm. Behavior of the patient that is putting others at risk of harm. Patients who are requiring treatment by a legal order. Patients who are requiring urgent life-saving treatment. When there is a need to maintain in secure setting. Therapeutic immobilization in fracture treatment. Before applying the restraint, we need to try all the alternative measures. When it is getting failed, then only we have to apply the restraint. As a part of that, assess the elimination pattern and meet the needs every two hourly. Especially the elderly people will get agitated when they want to do the elimination. Keep the needed things within the reach of the patient. Provide change of position to ensure comfort. Ensure the needed assistive devices are provided to the patient. Activate bed alarm. Provide diversional activity. Decrease the environmental stimuli and the noise. Increase the observation. Allow family to be with the patient. Alert other staff members to be observant. Move patient near to the nurse's station for direct and close observation. If the patient is interfering with his medical equipments, frequent education to the patient should be given not to touch the treatment devices. Keep the device out of reach of patient if it is possible and cover the device if it is needed. Restraint Guidelines when we want to apply restraint to the patient, there should be a doctor's order. But in case of any emergency, the nurse can initiate the restraint. Informed consent has to be obtained from the family members. Maintain restraint chart. Use the least restrictive device. Pad the bony prominence adequately before the application of restraint. Maintain good body alignment. Restraint order. The restraint can be initiated for the therapeutic purpose. It is very common in the treatment of fracture. And also it can be initiated when the behavior of the patient is 
threatening to the himself or to others in that situation all the alternative remedies has to be tried when it is fail then the restraint can be initiated once the restraint was initiated the physician order has to be obtained and also the family members has to be informed there are three major classification of restraint there are physical restraints chemical restraints and environmental restraints there are different types of physical restraints mummy restraint elbow restraint extremity restraint abdominal or belt restraint jacket restraint mitten or finger restraints mummy restraint it's very commonly used for newborn babies and infants in this technique the baby will be draped with a soft cloth so the mobility within the cloth is possible so that the baby will not interfere with the therapeutic procedures it is usually performed when the baby need to undergo any diagnostic or therapeutic procedures like iv cannulation over the scalp vein or any vein puncture insertion of ng tube ng feeding in those conditions the mummy restraint can be used elbow restraint it is commonly used on children especially to secure the iv cannula in its position by that we can able to prevent the mechanical trauma related with the iv cannula in this the fingers and extremities will be free so the child can perform all the activities only the elbow the baby will not able to bend or do the flexion extremity restraints the finger splint very commonly used for the fracture when the fingers or toes are getting fractured to maintain the immobility this kind of splints will be used over the extremity belt restraint or abdominal restraint in this a belt will be applied across the abdomen and that belt will be secured with a cot or chair or even on the prem for children so that the patient can do all kind of activities on the bed but they cannot able to get out of the bed by this we can able to prevent the fall related injuries safety belts also this kind of belts are used when the patient is getting shifted through the wheelchair stretcher or any other orthodontic procedures it is mainly used to prevent the fall related injuries jacket restraint it is very commonly used on children and also in elderly patients the jacket will be having the tag it will be tied along with the cot so the patient will be allowed to do all kind of activities on the bed they can sit they can eat and anything they can perform only thing they cannot able to get out of the bed mitten restraint mitten restraints are very commonly used in small children to avoid thumb sucking and pulling out the ng tube and iv tubings and also the mitten restraint can be used on adult patients to prevent pulling of ng tubing iv cannulas and other uh, treatment measures clawhatch restraint in this a loose knot will be prepared over the wrist or ankle the bony prominent will be padded adequately this knot will be o- applied over the padded area and this will be secured along with the cord not over the side rails chemical restraints chemical restraints are any form of psychoactive medication used not to treat illness but to intentionally inhibit a particular behavior or movement of the patient environmental restraint 
in this the patient can able to walk or roam around freely but they cannot able to come out of the room in this condition we have to make sure the patient room should not be left with any harmful devices especially metal fork knife all those things cannot be kept in the patient room this is very commonly used for the violent patients potential risk and side effects of using restraints psychological and emotional injuries the restraints for increased agitation and hostility feeling of humiliation loss of dignity increased confusion and fear the physical injuries are pressure ulcers can happen over the skin and trauma may arise decreased muscle mass tone strength and endurance contractures loss of balance increased risk of fall reduced heart and lung capacity physical discomfort and increased pain increased risk for constipation and fecal impaction high risk for incontinence and urinary stasis obstructed and restricted circulation may happen reduced appetite and also lead to dehydration in severe form it can cause death also nurses responsibility assess and monitor for the signs of any injury check for circulation and range of motion ensure patient comfort respect dignity and privacy readiness for discontinuation of the restraint maintain two hourly position chart and restraint chart periodic review should be done to off the restraint release restraint when the patient is sleeping and whenever it is possible especially when the family members can accompany the patient in this video we have learned about the restraint different types of restraint and also the complication related with the restraint so the restraint is a temporary remedy to control the patient behavior before we are applying the restraint all other alternative remedies has to be tried and it is the last choice for this i have referred the contents from the internet thank you for listening